Hi guys and welcome back. So in this next module we're going to look at cost loading and I, I want to start off by just introducing you to the concept and maybe ask the question why do you think it's important to cost load? Um, do you think it's important? For me personally I'm a, I'm a big advocate for cost loading a schedule and my reasons I'm quickly going to explain to you which will take us into this module. So firstly it's it's a great basis for cost estimation so a lot of contractors out there will use fancy uh, candy ccs software where you know you do your cost estimation uh, but microsoft project is very very capable as an estimating tool if you understand it and if you load and create your resources in the way that we've done in module five so i've opened up just a, an example to quickly show you uh, if we go to the resource sheet over here, that's typically what we've done in the previous modules. And this is what a contractor's resource sheet will look like in a company. And each and every time you've got a tender, you can simply go and change your rates and then set up your, your program, your, your schedule, and simply assign your resources to it. And once you do that, in the way that we've done over here, then you'll see there's my estimated cost now for this project. And everything is right down to the nuts and bolts. I mean, you can delve into each activity over here. And the cost is simply made up, that excavation, of the different resources that I've assigned with their costs. So if we go to the task usage view, let me just show you the amount of detail that you have. So I just want to open up this a little bit more. There we go. So there you can see that excavate for pipe trench. You can go and see the nuts and bolts of it. So it consists of my TLB backhoe loader, my tipper, uh, two operators, and then my labor. And there's the, the rates for that based on the hours that they're going to work. If I go to bedding, same thing applies. So there's my bedding material, 25, 24 cubes. There's the price. And it all adds up to that 8,880. Same with laying of the pipes. There's my pipe material cost plus the resources to execute. And all of this sums up in my different sections so I can slice and dice it to go and see more information up, up to the very detailed level. And then if I just close this up to the execution level, there's my project cost. And I just want to show you, I also have now a forecast. Let's just get this to a monthly. There we go. So there's my cost forecast on this project. If I execute in accordance with my schedule, then those are the costs that I'm going to have. And on this, I'll, I'll add my profit and that'll be my tender, my tender price. But now I can manage this cost in Microsoft. So secondly, the second very important reason I want to cost load is exactly that, the cost tracking and the variance adjustments. So let me just show you an example here. This is a schedule that I've done that is now already progressed. So there you can see the baseline cost that that was our estimate in the beginning on this project. And that's the current cost now based on new, you know, the, the progress up to date. So we can already see there's a cost variance. And if you want to ask the question, why is there a cost variance? That brings me to my third reason to cost load, which is you've got a very, very high degree of control over your schedule now. So if I go down, I can go and check this cost variance column and see, uh, let me see, there's a problem here in this pipe section, change 200 to 2000. And if I go down, I'll see, ah, oh, there's the problem. So in this little section, something happened. Can you see? because I've allowed 23,000 and there's my allowance again, the nuts and bolts of it. There's the resources, that was the allowance. That's my actual cost or the current cost in this instance. And now I can also see the variance to say, all right, so that's what we haven't allowed for. And if we go back to our schedule, you'll definitely find it there. So if I go back to my Gantt chart, You'll definitely in this section, there we go, 406, there you can see there's a problem. There's the baseline. Can you see the overrun there on that activity? So we worked 
longer on that excavation. We spent six days on it. And if I look at the baseline, it should have been four days. So immediately, can you see the amount of control that we have because I've cost loaded the schedule? Immediately, I can see that's why there's a problem there. And that's why those two day overrun, just a two day overrun, 11,680. And you must ask yourself, do you have this level of control in your company? To go and pinpoint the problem and ask the question, why did we lose two days there? Because that's what it's costing us. And then thirdly, guys, the, ah, sorry, the fourth reason that I like to cost load is simply because it's the most accurate form of progress measurement that we have. So because I've got a cost loaded schedule here, I can simply go and check my actual cost to date based on my update. All right, so it's 590,000. That's what I've spent. If you look at my plan over here, I should have spent seven, eight, nine thousand if I was on schedule. So immediately I can see I am behind schedule because I didn't spend as much. And if you take a percentage now of this actual cost in relation to my baseline budget, that gives me an accurate progress percentage forecast. The other methods that you have to do it is to use the effort to look at the work, the, the hours, but that will not always correspond with your bill of quantities, the certificate that you've done from a bill of quantities point of view. Whereas this will, because this will correspond closely with your bill of quantities, the amount that you've claimed up to date. Uh, and the same goes for the normal progress percentage function of Microsoft. Sorry, if you go to, let's just go back to that. So remember, once we've done progress, We've got access to this percentage complete, which isn't very accurate because sometimes we've got activities like this overhead costing activity that contributes in terms of its duration towards the percentage complete year. Or we've, we have long lead activities with delivery times. They don't add anything actually to the progress because they don't carry weight in terms of money or effort. But if we look at the percentage complete, they'll add weight in terms of that. So percentage complete isn't as accurate as we would want it. If we look at effort, that's a bit more accurate. But the most accurate is a cost loaded schedule where we take our cost and compare it to the bill and then take a percentage of that. So those are the four reasons why I prefer to cost load a schedule. And in the end, it comes down to a whole lot of control that you have and uh, Let's do the, the lessons in the next, um, well, in this module, and you'll be able to do exactly the same. And once we get to the reporting module, I'll show you the, the massive amount of control that you suddenly have because of the cost load. So in this model, we're going to do two methods. We're going to look at the normal as uh, the resource loading method for contractors, but there's also a method of linking your bill, which I'm going to share with you that not a lot of people know. Right, see you guys in the in the lessons.